Hey, how's it going everybody? Burr Brian here. Welcome back to another Tall Can Tuesday. In this video series, I like to give channel updates, talk about random topics, and answer questions submitted by you, the fine viewers of this channel, and of course, drink some beer. Now, I've been trying to alternate. One week, I'll be drinking malt liquor, and the following will be craft beer. And since last week, I took on the Steel Reserve High Gravity, we're going to enjoy an awesome craft beer. This one, I almost don't want to open the bottle because it's just so cool. Uh, this is The Walking Dead, and this is... Uh, a blood orange IPA and with the turtle on front you can tell that this is a Cherapin Brewing Company beer they always have an awesome turtle uh, theme on the front it says here on the side Terrapin Beer Company and the Walking Dead have teamed up to brew the official beer of the undead made with blood orange peel and a horrific amount of hops this bloodthirsty red IPA will have you prepared for the upcoming zombie apocalypse and you'll need more than this beer to survive that but uh, this one does have a 6.7% per volume, so hey, at least you'll get drunk through the, uh, the apocalypse. But uh, also, this beer, I've got to say thank you. It was uh, actually sent to me uh, from my friend Preston, who runs a YouTube channel, The Beer Chasers. And he was kind enough to send this one out along with several home brews uh, that you'll be seeing reviews for here shortly. And we also have a live collaboration coming up sometime here in the real near future. So I'll have a link down in the description where you can go and check out his channel and some of his other beer reviews. Uh, I really like the way he talks about beer. He's really knowledgeable and definitely knows what he's talking about. So definitely go and check out his channel. But without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and pop the top because I do have some stuff to talk about. I am happy to see that this has good carbonation to it because when it was sent to me it did uh, leak a little bit and it still smells really good. That was my fear is I didn't know if because it leaked maybe it wouldn't be good anymore so I kind of wanted to drink this one relatively quickly. Uh, one thing I am noticing that there really isn't much of a head to it so I think maybe I did lose a little bit of the carbonation but there is still, so, uh, still something there. So uh, let's see, I do have a lot of stuff to talk about, but first, we take a big old swig of this beer. Well, it definitely didn't, uh, it didn't go bad in the mail, that's for sure. Thankfully, it tastes really good. This is actually a nice, smooth, fruity IPA. I mean, uh, I'm typically not a big fan of a lot of red ales, but... With the addition of all the hops added to this and the blood orange peel, it definitely comes through that nice citrus note. This is definitely a, a pretty killer beer huh, for the uh, undead. Mm. Alright, so we're going to jump right into this. Uh, I want to start by giving you guys a few updates. Here recently I had the opportunity to meet the creator of an Australian hot sauce and I was the actually the first person here in the United States to get a chance to try his sauce and since then several other big reviewers have had the opportunity to try uh, these sauces big names people like Ted Barris um, he Ted really loved all of his sauces and I'm thankful because I, I agreed with him 100% his sauces are amazing these are made with all natural ingredients they're they're fresh tasty you can really taste the the good ingredient the quality that's put into these uh, but anyway uh, I'm talking about Cobra chili and if you if you don't know what they are you can look through some of my hot sauce reviews and you'll find several videos um, just again incredible sauces and when they make their sauces unlike some companies and the reason why I'm a totally against extract sauces and why you see you know so many people doing this you can achieve the same same level of heat uh, that extract sauces have it, you know if you put the right amount of peppers in your sauce and I feel that oftentimes a lot of sauce makers who do use extract are just trying to cheat and save money by using an extract substitute instead of putting in the money and the time to use real fresh whole peppers and the problem with that is it just gives most of those sauces a bitter metallic taste. Just it makes all of those pretty much all of those sauces garbage in my eyes. Uh, but the cool thing was anyway, Vaughn Henry is the uh, owner of Cobra Chili, and he was actually here in the states, uh, in my home state of Florida, uh, doing a, a few uh, food shows here, and, and was working on getting some of his sauces released here in the states, which is so cool. I'm happy that all of you are going to get a chance to uh, do this. But anyway, it was awesome. I got the chance to uh, meet with Vaughn. And, um, you know, it, it just what a really cool uh, experience that was to actually sit there and try some of his sauces right there with him. Uh, but uh, a couple things that I'm going to have coming up here in the near future. You know, I've got uh, a new sauce here. This is their Tropical Zing. You've got the uh, Blazing Saddles. This is another one that you haven't seen me do a review for. I don't believe you've seen me do uh, Habanero yet either, but I've got this one. 
Uh, I have done Scorpion Tail before, but uh, it was nice of him to give me another bottle um, so that uh, I can punish some other friends of mine with that one. Uh, because again, these are made with a lot, a lot of peppers. This one actually has 30% of fresh Trinidad Scorpion pepper, so uh, really, really good. And then I've got a Fever Chili Paste, and this one is made with, uh, what was it, um, the uh, Carolina Reaper, I believe. Yes, this one is made with 50% fresh Carolina Reaper, and man, this one's going to be brutal. I also have one more that I'm not going to tell you about yet. That one's kind of a secret. It's an exclusive sauce, and I will hopefully be the first one uh, here in the States, where I should be the first one uh, here in the States to share that one with you very, very soon. It's an Asian-style soy-based sauce, so I'm really excited to share that one with you. Anyway, it was very, very cool to meet with him, and uh, I really look forward to actually having some awesome hot sauces to share with you, all of you here in the very near future. Okay, so, uh, also, things have been going really good lately. I've been having some fun. This whole month is completely booked. I know I've got, I believe, well, hopefully, I've got an interview planned with a local bar owner, bar slash pizza shop owner, very, very creative guys, and I believe this is their 30th, maybe longer, I think I want to say it's their 30th uh, birthday anniversary coming up here, and they always do this really awesome Halloween party. They call it Halloween because, uh, or, I'm sorry, a Gumby Ween because, uh, the, the place is called Gumby's Pizza, and, and it's also known as Quarter Heroes here in town. It's one of my favorite bars to go to, just because when I walk in, it's like my own cheers. I've known all the bartenders. Um, you know, they always know exactly what I want when I walk in. It's just an awesome place in general, and the pizzas are incredibly creative. So stay tuned for that. I should have some uh, Halloween party stuff coming up for you. I've got uh, all kinds of shenanigans with, uh, I think, two Halloween parties this month. Plus, I've got... Still working on an interview with uh, Sweet Mel's. I'm just trying to get it edited. I want that to be really good when I put it out for all of you. Also, I went to Hogwaller recently, which is basically a mud hole here in Florida where people go and do mud bogs, bring out their trucks, ATVs, tear up the swamp, tear up the lake beds. It's a whole lot of fun. And uh, this was my first time actually going out there and riding around on some badass ATVs. And so I've got a lot of really cool GoPro footage I have to go through and edit. If you'd like to see a little bit of sort of a teaser for what's going to be coming up here soon in the near future with that video, uh, check out my uh, playlist and look back a couple videos and you'll see a short one minute teaser to show you how much fun we had and what you can expect uh, to see for that video here in the near future. Uh, but um, anyway, I think that's really about it. This, this month has been just packed full of fun stuff and I'm looking forward to sharing all of these uh, awesome events with you at home so uh, cheers now my last craft beer video ended up being almost 20 minutes and I want to try to keep these between 10 to 15 minutes in length uh, at most and uh, so that's what we're going to do with this one, try to speed through it a little bit better, but now I do have some questions and topics to get to submitted by, well, of course, all of you fine people who enjoy my channel. Uh, to start with, we'll talk from uh, here from Devonshire Idiot and Company. He says, do a healthy food challenge, like try to eat a whole cucumber in less than five minutes. He says it's harder than it looks, and that is something that I might consider doing. I always have a hard time with some of these food challenges because I'm trying to lose weight, and at the same time, I'm dealing with like a lot of different health issues, so I can't take in a whole lot of sodium and certain things because of blood pressure issues and whatnot. So while it would be awesome to do some of those food challenges, it's just not feasibly possible, especially the ones that have ridiculous amounts of sodium. Like when I did the Tapatio chug, the bottle chug, 10 and a half ounces, I think, uh, with Death Tolls Corner, another awesome YouTuber. It was just way too much salt. I think it was 6,600 milligrams of sodium in one bottle, which is just astronomical. I mean, totally way more than anybody should ever eat. It messed me up for a little while. My, uh, I started feeling like my left leg was swelling up. It hurt. You know, I had to pee like 30 times in a day. So I'm definitely looking for healthier food challenges and just other little fun challenges in general. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them down below. Uh, also, now I've got a BioX1 food reviews and um, reaction videos. He's a fellow Floridian who makes some pretty cool YouTube videos, and he does food challenges and things. Uh, I'll have a link down in the description. You can go and check out his channel. Uh, he says, have you ever tried the steak and cheese sub from Subway? If not, can you please make a video? And yes, I, I have. Uh, I actually never have tried that one, but uh, I will pick one up and do a review for you because, you know, hey, I love steak and cheese, and sounds like a pretty good sandwich. So thanks for the question and the request. 
Lost Ways 27, another um, great viewer of mine who's always leaving me feedback. He says, maybe have a sports chat video where you pick your choices of who's going to win some games on NFL Sunday, but do it on Saturdays or college football Friday nights to get ready for Saturdays. And I do like the idea of that, um, but I got to be honest to tell you, it's probably not going to happen simply because... I'm not a huge sports fan. I, I root for my local team. I, I root for my Florida, uh, well, some of my Florida teams. Some of them I'd rather not. But uh, the, the I'm really kind of a college guy for the most part. Um, and and I, I really only have a handful of teams. I don't do fantasy football uh, or any of the fantasy sports because, and, and I don't want to offend anybody, but honestly, I look at that as like Dungeons and Dragons for jocks, basically. It's like, I, I don't really... I, I like watching teams win. I like rooting for my team, but I don't care about following every single individual player and all of their stats and all of that stuff. There's so many other things I'd like to be doing, especially focusing on the food world. They really take my time and attention away, and, and I'm just really not that big of a sports fan. I only have a handful of teams that I really enjoy. So I do appreciate the suggestion, but odds are it probably won't come from me, um, you know, again, because I'm, I'm just not at all a big fan of uh, too much sports, and there, I guess the reason why I'm kind of ruined on sports is, you know, I've just, I've had so many people that are like big time sports fans, and they ruin it for everybody else, because they're just such assholes about, you know, you can't, it's like I try to root for my team, and I understand that sometimes people are going to be, you know, uh, they'll pick on you, and it's, it's all fun and games and stuff, but there comes a time when people just become complete assholes and are obnoxious and say really rude things and you just want to punch them in the face because it's like, all right, look, I get it. You know, your team won. Great. But a good sportsman, at least the way I was raised growing up and playing sports is, you know, my coaches taught me to not really gloat in the face of my, uh, you know, the, the people that I defeated. Um, it's just not a, a very becoming thing. It's not a good sportsmanship and it's a shame that so many adults have taken that on. I actually had to remove a friend from my friends list because he was just, uh, he apparently didn't like my view on this issue. It was just being a complete dickhead. So, you know, and that's, again, the problem with Facebook. You end up uh, liking or, you know, adding a new friend to your, you know, your list that uh, you knew in high school. And in reality, you really don't know them at all. And honestly, I didn't know the guy. I don't, you know, there's a, quite a few people that I've added. And, and, you know, I look back on those days and a lot of those people weren't ever really nice to me in high school. Most of them were kind of dicks. So why am I going to be friends with you now? all these years later and you know I'm sorry but you know I had to let that one go uh, anyway let's go on we've got Francisco F he asked me question what possessed you to wear this terrible yellow polo and in my last shirt I had a yellow uh, striped shirt I don't know I just went to this uh, this thing where I got a whole lot of like new clothes so I got a whole bunch of stuff khaki slags a ton of polos a ton of different shirts and stuff so just been kind of like switching my wardrobes up but I can always keep it simple with my my uh, my regular cool tees um, but uh, he also says, what kind of music are you into? Uh, he says, good channel, you should have more subs. Hey, I really appreciate that, man. As far as what music I'm into, I guess my heart really lies with classic rock and rock and roll in general. Metallica being probably my favorite band of all time. I mean, they've, I've just, I don't know, ever since I was little, I've always followed them. I, at one point, I could tell you, you know, like what everybody's favorite meals were. I'm pretty sure James Hetfield was more of a meat and potatoes guy. And, uh, and I think he liked Guinness and stuff. I'm not sure, but I could, I, at one point I could tell you everything about the band. Um, but I grew up with my parents. My dad was a, a trumpet player in the early, uh, in, you know, I think the, uh, the 50s and the 60s, just when it really wasn't, when he was on AM uh, radio instead of FM. So he really didn't get a whole lot of exposure. But anyway, he grew up with a lot of great Southern rock bands. And he, you know, listening to all of the music that uh, that he and my mom were into really kind of got me into classic rock, rock and roll in general. I play guitar myself, but that doesn't mean I exclude all other music styles. I'm a big fan of uh, mostly old school rap and old school hip hop. I'm not a fan of a lot of the club bangers and stuff. I mean, if it's just, you know, the, the same line being repeated over and over again, like most of Wiz Khalif and most of these new ones, yeah, they've got a couple catchy ones here and there, but it's just really crappy music i mean there's no talent at all put into lyrics it's just some cool beats with shitty lyrics and somehow these people are making millions of dollars it's beyond me uh, but i goes all the way back to classical music i mean i like a ton of stuff I'm, I'm pretty open when it comes to uh to music the only things i'm not big into obviously are like opera um although i mean i'm not opposed to going out to a good show um it's just never really been my style, and I'm not a big fan of country. I, I like old school country. If we're talking David Allen Coe and, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, Hank Williams, Hank Williams Jr., L. even the third, uh, all of those people. That's that's my kind of style. I, I'm into that, you know, Johnny Cash kind of thing. Not this new pop country that uh, that we seem to have out everywhere. Uh, but thanks again for your question, dude. Appreciate it. Sorry, I feel like I'm rambling on with this video. And I hope you guys enjoy. I, I don't, uh, you know, anyway, sometimes I feel like I talk too much. All right, so let's see. Who else do we got? Sorry, I'm just kind of scrolling through here. Uh, Lost Ways 27 again comes in and says, I'm not a fast food type of person, but maybe do fast food Friday or takeout type of food. Uh, I like it when you see the hot sauces on food like you recently did on a pizza. Keep it up and have fun. Uh, well, I am going to be trying to do more. The reason why I don't generally have a lot of food when I do my hot sauce reviews is it's usually during a time when I'm a little bit broke and I don't have a lot of stuff in there. And so, uh, but I am going to try to get more, get better about that. If I'm going to review a hot sauce and I, I think it's going to pair well with the food, I'm really going to try to make that kind of food to, uh, to review with that sauce. And as far as fast food Friday, I may try to do something like that. I am, that's kind of what my bites video series is. It's supposed to be about restaurants and fast food and stuff like that. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Maybe I'll do a, a release of Monday through Friday with Saturdays and Sundays off. It's just, it's hard because people really don't like to watch videos on Fridays or Saturdays. Those are kind of the party days. Nobody seems to be sitting in front of the TV between football and all that. Sundays I have been getting some views on my videos, so that's pretty cool. And I'll probably keep posting on those. But um, uh, anyway, that's kind of what I'm doing with the Bite series. It's supposed to feature fast food menus, secret food items, restaurant food, all of that random stuff. Um, but maybe I can work on that and tweak it a little bit better. Thanks, thanks again for the suggestion. Oh, let's see. What else do we got? What else do we got? Um, let's see. What do we got? We got the Sleepy1326. He's a, uh, a fellow uh, Florida buddy of mine who uh, suggested that I try the Blueberry Cobbler Ale from Funky Buddha Brewery. I actually just found that the other day, along with, I believe, the Sweet Potato Casserole. So I should have uh, videos coming for both of those sometime here real soon. Uh, William Niddle, uh, he said, uh, frankly, the mother sauces. If you're doing cooking videos, might as well start from the beginning with Escoffier and do cooking history with a good chill feel about it. And that's a pretty cool idea. I, I hadn't really thought about, you know, really starting with the roots of cooking. And, and maybe I should, but at the same time, I feel like if I'm going to get really in-depth with a lot of this stuff, maybe I should set up, I don't know, I mean, I, I thought about setting up one of those uh, teaching courses, basically, where I explain, but... I don't know, man. That that just seems too much. Like, I'm not trying to make money off of this. Um, it does take a lot of time to prepare and to go through all this. And if I'm going to make, like, a large batch of sauce to really, you know, show people, like, when it comes to making, you know, my mother's sauces, some of them, like bechamels and things, are they really don't take a whole lot. And I can make small batches. Um, but I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like... I feel like right now I don't get enough views to really put a whole lot of heart and soul into some of these cooking videos and maybe as far as like teaching the absolute, the fundamentals of cooking, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm waiting until I get a few more subscribers to do some of those and I really just kind of want to put out some fun recipes and ideas for now. But I do like the idea, William, and, and I'll think about that and see if I can try to to start working on some of those mother sauces because that is a great idea to kind of start at the basics and go from there. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a cordon bleu teacher and, and you know, a lot of these things you, you could learn at the Culinary Institute and stuff and, and uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's what people want to see. We'll, we'll see. I'll work on that. That is a great suggestion, though. Uh, Flintquatch says, would love to share a beer with you if you ever make it up to North Carolina. Uh, I will try to uh, make my way up there sometime soon. I'd love to get together and have a brew with you. Uh, what else we got? What else? Um, Michael Kincaid asked if I tried the uh, Natty Daddy. Uh, yeah, I have had the Natty Daddies. I had the Natty Ice. That one's a lot. I don't know. It's a slightly higher alcohol content, so I like it. If I'm going to drink a watered-down beer, I'd rather have the higher alcohol content if I could. And it actually tasted pretty good for um, you know for what it was worth. Um, what else we got? I think that's it. Our, although my buddy Arnett Lynn said, I saw an ad one time for Steel Reserve. It said, the beer for ballers on a budget. And that is a, uh, a nice quote for Steel Reserve. Steel Reserve is a definitely a crappy beer. I don't know about ballers on a budget. You got to be a, if you're, I don't really see a baller being that low on a budget. If you're a baller, 
you know, you should have like a dollar fifty as your budget. <laughs> so uh, I guess you're not really a baller if you're drinking dollar fifty uh, uh, steel reserve high gravities. But uh, anyway, let me take another swig of this. Really, really good beer. Definitely nice, easy drinking, smooth. I love that citrus taste, and it. it's a great IPA for what it's worth. Um, and I've got to hold on to this bottle and keep it uh, in my somewhere up top, maybe up there with all those other bottles. But I just I love this uh, design and label here. Very, very cool. Uh, let's see. As far as shout outs go, of course, I always throw out my uh, a couple here. I've got. Friends of mine like Sean Klimber, of course, he's a, uh, a friend of mine from Alaska. He does a lot of really cool hot sauce reviews and pepper reviews. Haven't seen too much from him lately, unfortunately, um, but uh, definitely love his channel, man. I love what you do. Keep up the great work. Uh, I guess this is in general just a shout out to everybody in the, uh, the malt liquor drinking community as well as the craft beer drinking community, which comprised, which makes up the YouTube drinking community, all of these uh, different people that come together. The problem is, is it's just, it's amazing how much hate there is between the craft beer and the malt liquor. It's like, you know, I mean, I, I guess it, it is done from what I hear mostly for fun. I mean, everybody just rips on each other and stuff to have a good time, and that's how it is. Um, but, uh, you know, I just think it's funny that here we are, we all make up this YouTube drinking community, and yet we're so divided in the middle. And, and you know, I think that really... It falls on both both parties. I mean, both parties are to blame. You've got craft beer snobs who just look at malt liquor and all the cheap beers as just being absolute shit that they would never drink, and they turn their nose to it and talk so much trash about it. Then the people who actually who drink those beers, which I generally look at as being people like me who are honestly hardworking, middle-class people who enjoy like the cheap beers maybe they've got families they've got all these bills and things and all they can really afford is, is the the cheaper end beers and either way or it's just people who love and have a taste for malt liquor uh it's just a shame that there's so much of a hate between the two i mean both people enjoy beer and to me that's a common ground that we should all you know embrace and enjoy but people will be people hey just know that i am not going to be polarized on one side or the other i enjoy it all i i do find that a lot of malt liquors and cheap beers now that I've gotten older and I've started drinking better beers uh, that they are below my standards they're not things that I would drink on a regular basis now when I'm when I'm uh, broke and times are tough sure I'll pick up one of those beers and give it a shot um, but in general these are the kind of beers I like to drink I like IPAs in particular IPAs I think India Pale Ales are the way to go high alcohol content nice bitter flavor Great explosion from hops, all that good stuff. Um, but uh, I've just rambled on and on in this video. And, and I just want to take this second to say uh, thank you to all of you who have followed along. This is a shout out to all of you who are my subscribers, who enjoy what I do. This is just an awesome experience to me. This is uh, it's a whole lot of fun. It, it gives me a chance to really explore some of my passions, some of the things I'm, I'm really, uh, really into, which is, of course, the craft beer scene. I'm into food. I'm in... I'm just into having a good time and sharing my life with some of you guys. And if you enjoy watching, hit that like button. Let me know down below what you think. Leave me a comment if you got topics, something you'd like to hear me talk about in the next video. doesn't matter how controversial it is. If you have questions, I'm always going to be honest with you, especially in this video series. I know that when I do my hot sauces and I do all of these other reviews, I kind of try to keep it somewhat professional and only talk about the product that I'm reviewing. But... Um, you know, I'm an honest guy. This is this is my channel. This is uh, this particular video series is my chance to open up to you guys and talk with you and let you know what I really think about certain things. So if you got any questions, anything, let me know down below. I always love answering and talking with all of you guys. So again, I've got a good little bit of beer here left. I know I've been rambling on for way too long now. So let me go ahead and see if I can uh, somewhat pound this and uh, salute. really really good beer definitely uh, hope I can find that one in my local area sometime again soon because uh, just it's just an awesome beer and the labels pretty cool uh, very cool but uh, anyway 
Again, I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to uh, follow me on all the various social networking sites from Instagram, Google+, Twitter, Facebook. If you play video games, I'm on the Steam Network. And if you're a connoisseur of Minecraft beers, you can follow me on Untapped. There should be links down below in the description of this video or somewhere on my channel. And uh, as always, stay toasty, my friends.